It's the best man woke him on with a top 100 recruit in 2021, and now the first and the only commit out Kyle so far, Marcellus Robertson. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. I mean, let's just get right into this. You're going to commit it now. What's it feel like just to have it off your plate and know that you're going to be going to Cal? Um, it's a blessing for real. Um, it just feels good to like get the process over with and just focus on more important things like school and just getting better as a basketball player. October 8th for you. It's, it's the day I was here with your dad. Take us through your thoughts, your feelings, and why today was the day you wanted to commit. Um, today was the day I wanted to commit, you know, with my dad passing. I feel like today would be a good day to commit, just make my family happy. But also, like, just the, the timing and everything, I mean, it's in a good time for me, at least. When you came on a few months ago, you, we discussed that a little bit. You knew October 8th was going to be the day you wanted to do it. But a lot of things happened with COVID. Things didn't open up in this time period. So I know it was a little shaky for you. How do you feel comfortable now knowing that October 8th, you were comfortable committing on this day now? Um, originally, that was my plan. But then, like, as the summer went along, I kind of uh, pushed it back and said I wanted to commit like after the school year, but just knowing that I can fall through my original plan is a blessing, so. When you commit now, what goes to your mind that you're representing your dad and you're accomplishing the goals that you've set for your life? Um, it's, um, it makes, it pushes me to play harder. Um, it just gives me more fuel uh, to play with like a chip on my shoulder. That's the main thing. No doubt. Well, let's get into this commitment, man. You had a top four, Cal, Stanford, Cincinnati, UCSB. What well, one of those four? Why were those the four schools that you chose to have in your final four? Um, firstly, uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, the, co the head coach, Coach Pasenek, had a has a really good relationship with my trainer, Ron Nelson. And then beautiful campus and just opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. And then Stanford. Uh, mostly with the education and that was one of the first schools to start recruiting me uh, I really like the program just a good platform to play and then Cincinnati um, they have a good play style and the coaches are really cool and genuine so that's the really went into it we know the school we're going to is Cal what separated them from the other three what separated Cal from the other three was just like Honestly, like the coaching staff and like Coach Fox calling all my family, like he called my grandpa, he called my uncle, my mom. He was just, he was really genuine and he wasn't really like, it didn't seem like they were trying to recruit me. It seemed like they were trying to build a relationship. That's something new I've heard. I've heard them talking to family members, but kind of the extended family, your grandparents and that. Having a coach truly invest in knowing your entire family, what did that mean to you? Uh, that meant a lot to me, especially when you call my grandpa, because my grandpa, like, he's at every game. And mm -hmm. it's just a blessing to be able to stay home so you can still do that. I wanted to touch upon this. I don't think a lot of people look at Cal as maybe an uh, all, all-time big basketball program, known for necessarily just basketball. But we do see some players come from them in the past. Most notably right now, Jalen Brown's a big attraction. You have Alan Krabs, the great NBA player. You have a few of the players that played at Cal now in the NBA. How appealing was it seeing guys at your position, a guy in Jalen Brown that you do share a lot of characteristics with, go to the NBA and go to Cal and kind of see the way he, he, they panned out? Honestly, that didn't go into my decision that much. But, you know, just knowing that I have somebody to look, look at and see where he's at uh, just means a lot. But, I mean, it was mostly with, like, the coaching staff just recruiting me hard. That's why I made my decision. Let's discuss Coach Fox a little bit more. He's a great coach. How has this relationship started, though? When did you guys first start talking, and how did it kind of build over the past few months? Um, we first started talking, I think, in May. And it, it started with, like, just Zoom calls after the season and then um, just phone calls. They uh, kept in contact with me almost every week. So, yeah. This offer came in in the beginning of June. Now we're up in October. What really was the changing point? How were they able to come in later into your recruiting process and become the school you're going to commit to? Just the genuine relationship we built. I felt like I could talk to them about anything. And then also, like, what mattered to me, like, kind of changed in the process. Like, I realized I wanted to stay home and play in front of my family. 
That is a big thing. I think a lot of guys have started to look at that because of COVID, because of the situation our world's in right now, staying close to home and you're even getting closer than you are for high school right now, being just in that family presence, having the hometown support, how excited you to step on that court and just kind of have everyone support you and embrace you? Uh, it's a great opportunity. I have a lot of family in Berkeley and Oakland. And then um, it gives my Sacramento family the chance to come see me without having to fly. So it was just the perfect situation for me. When would you say was the turning point? When did you know Cal was a school you wanted to commit to? Um, I feel like I knew Cal was a school I wanted to commit to like a few weeks after I like made my top four, like maybe like middle of September. I just had a feeling that that was like the school for me. Like, How excited are you about to join this Pac-12 and see what the competition is like out there? I'm, uh, I'm just excited to play against the people that everybody said was better than me in high school and just prove myself. And um, I really want to win there. So I'm just really looking forward to winning. We'll go into West Coast Elite a little bit in the end. But the overall players, there's a few guys that already committed to the Pac-12. KJ is going to Arizona. Biddle is going to be out there at Oregon. How excited are you to play those guys? Uh, Biddle, that's bro. I mean, I can't wait to play against him. Uh, we have a good relationship. So I don't really, I don't know KJ like that well, but we played on the same team at Pangos, I'm pretty sure. So that would be interesting. You had a play a few weeks ago, you came out to Arizona and you dunked on Nathan Biddle. What was that play like? Did you just kind of trash talk after it? <laughs> uh, I mean, it was kind of funny. He was, after the game, we was just laughing about it, but yeah. <laughs> I'd say that dunk you do is kind of your signature dunk. I, almost every time you look at one of your high real dunks, it's almost the exact same one you do. What kind of was in that? When did you first start using that dunk? Um, I mean, I'm left-handed, so and I'm I'm a one-foot jumper. I jump better off one foot, so it just comes more natural to me. Will Cal fans be able to expect some big dunks in your career there? Definitely. <laughs> Let's talk about your 2020 recruiting class. You're the first and the only guy. You're going to pretty much become the face of this class now. Who else are you guys kind of targeting? Who would you want to bring along with you to join you in 2021 there? Uh, to join my 2021 class, I would love to have Deron Holmes and Bryce Hopkins join me. And also, I'm trying to uh, recruit Aiden Mahaney in the 2022 class, come play point guard. I feel like it would be a nice backcourt. Let's talk about, a little bit about Deron. He's a guy that I think is undervalued a little bit. I was from Mount Vernon now for this upcoming senior season, but he's got all the skill sets. He's a top five, top 25 kind of player. What would it be like adding him to this group? Uh, I mean, he's very athletic. I played against him my sophomore year. He was really good. Um, his personality is great. He has a great character. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to, I'm just trying to build a relationship with him. If it all aligns well and you have Duran, you have Bryce yourself, and Aiden comes in 2022 year, what, could you, what would you guys be capable of accomplishing that season? Uh, I feel like we could win the Pac-12 and uh, take it really far into the tournament especially with uh, Monty Bowser and the rest of the guys on, on the team. Monty's a big piece there. You guys were former teammates. He's out there at Cal now. To be able to reunite with him, what's that going to be like? It's going to be fun. I mean, last year I threw him a lot of lobs. I'm looking to throw him a lot more uh, in, this, in these upcoming years. And we already have great chemistry, so it'll be fun. How big of a role did he have in recruiting you to Cal? Um, I mean, he didn't really have that big of a role. It was mostly like the coaches, but I mean, that being like one of my best friends from, from high school just made the decision a lot easier. Was he ever talking to you about it, trying to entice you to come there? Or how often do you guys kind of talk about you possibly going and playing with him in college? Uh, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, he would just ask me like, what's up with recruiting? How you feel about Cal every year? And, here and there, so, yeah. At what point do you let him know that you're gonna be going there? Uh, I let him know when I uh, when I made the decision, like myself, like a few weeks ago. And what was his reaction to it? Uh, he was happy. I mean, he was ecstatic to know that I'm going there with him. Uh, I just saw him like a few days ago. We ran into each other. 
And another big reaction we always hear is how the coaches react. So when you told Coach Fox that you're going to be committing to Cal, what was his reaction? Uh, we had a Zoom with the whole coaching staff. They were uh, they were just really happy. You oh, could really tell. So what's going to the senior season upcoming for you? You've had an incredible high school career so far. When you look at your progression, it's not the typical superstar top 100 kind of career. You've gone through JV. You've gone through being a six man. You've now become a top 100 guy, a highly recruited player. Just looking at your progression, what, where you've come from the past four years, what does that mean to you? And what is it like looking back at that? Um, that means a lot. I mean, I knew I had it in me. I just worked hard every day and just had to prove myself on the court. But I feel like I have a lot more work to do. I haven't really showed that much with the season being canceled early and just only playing two years on varsity. I feel like I have a lot of work to do. When did you know you were going to become a big time player? And you knew that you could be one of the best players in your class. Honestly, uh, my family was just telling me that from the beginning. Uh, it took a minute for me to really believe in myself and like just pr prove to myself and like play against other top guys and really compete with them to show that I'm like, I'm up there. So. So many guys have your story. Not many guys can make varsity as a freshman, even as a sophomore. For other people that deal with struggling in the basketball world, what's your advice to them to possibly, for them to possibly live out the same career way that you've now lived out? I just say, stay in the gym when everybody's asleep. You know, just work your hardest, pray. Um, that's that's really that. That's really that. Take us through your day workouts. A typical day in your life. What does it look like for you? Uh, during COVID. I've been waking up at 5 a.m., uh, training in the mornings, and then uh, I'll lift weights in the middle of the day, do jumping drills later. It depends, though. Some some days are different, but, yeah. Personally, I'm not a big fan of rankings. They don't really matter that much, but I think whenever, whenever you're able to see yourself in the top 100, it just kind of is a nice day for you. You can kind of get some recognition. You see the people are starting to recognize you. What was that day like in June when you saw your name in the top 100? Uh, it surprised me, but I mean, it just gave me more motivation to work harder. You know, we're not playing right now. So just work in the dark so I can, you know, uh, get higher, like higher rankings. We know living in California and with COVID going on, your season has been pushed back kind quite of a bit now. The season being moved back. Uh, what went through my mind was just uh, staying in Sacramento, just training with my trainer and just trying to get better. Um, Coach Lou, you know, he's been telling us this since COVID came out. He's been telling us that we're probably not going to have a season this year or the upcoming year. So just be prepared. If there is no season, you just have one year of grinding, working hard. What's the biggest thing you want to improve on before you get at Cal next year? I want to improve on everything, but most importantly, like my strength, uh, my athleticism, my ball handling, and then just uh, my shooting. Last year, you averaged 16 and a half points a game, a little over six rebounds, three assists. One of the top players on your team, one of the top players in the state. Where do you want to grow from that if there is a season? I want to win California Player of the Year, and I want to average over 20 points. But if I don't average over 20 points, that doesn't really matter. I just want to win a state championship. Monty's out of the picture now. You really are the focal point of the team. Jalen Lewis is another huge player that's going to step up now in a sophomore Who's year. Big players that you think are going to take a big jump this upcoming year. Uh, I feel like Taj is going to take a big jump, and you're going to hear a lot more about Cajal because he didn't uh, really play that much last year. But, yeah, Taj is definitely going to take a big jump. We're in the Final Four, though. To be able to come back this upcoming year if there's a season and finish that off, what's the team goals you guys have? Uh, some of the team goals we, we talk about every day is just winning the state championship. And we try to, like, still talk to each other, keep that chemistry as much as we can, hang out with each other as much as we can. And you're a guy that I look at as a guy that can play all five positions. You can bring the ball up, play the wing. You can definitely guard at all positions as well. How have you learned to play all five positions? Um, Just with, like, Coach Lou asking different things from me, like, if I'm playing guard and it's like a little guard, he'll send me to the post sometimes. And that we just used that last year to our advantage because it was always like a little guy guarding me. So I'll just go to the post and it's easy baskets. And that is not an easy thing. We see how valuable that is. And that's what gets guys not only scholarships, but NBA values out of bunch. When there's a guy that can play at one to three positions a lot of time, but if they can play all five, those are the guys like LeBron, like Giannis Antetokounmpo. 
how have you learned to develop in that and how comfortable are you now running one to five? Uh, I've, I feel like I've always been comfortable. I mean, my IQ is really picking up over the years. So I'm just becoming more of a poise, like I'm becoming more poised and just learning how to run point guard still. But yeah, I just, you just got to guard one through five. That's the main thing. When you talk to Coach Fox and the coaching staff, what do they expect for you as a freshman, both position wise and just production wise? Uh, Coach Fox always talks about offense and I'm going to have opportunity to play right away. So just mainly like scoring and all, but you also got to play defense, but he just mainly talks about just offense. I mentioned earlier, we're going to wrap up kind of talking about West Coast Elite a little bit. And that's Coach Silver is an incredible director. He's really brought a lot of guys to the division one level. What's it been like having him in your life? Having a uh, Coach Silver in my life has been a blessing. I mean, I haven't really felt this from AAU program yet. This is the first time I really felt like it was a family. So just a real blessing to have him in my corner. We mentioned Nathan Bitt a little bit earlier. Aiden Mahaney is the guy you said you're in charge of recruiting. But just seeing all these guys that are, with, are within this West Coast Elite program make it to the college level, what's it like being a part of that group? Uh, it's great. I mean, Aiden is one of my best friends. We hang out all the time, talk all the time. Yeah, it's great. And a few more things before I let you go. One is building a legacy for yourself, something I always like wrapping up with. By the time you are done playing basketball someday, what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, I want to be known as a winner. I want to bring a Pac-12 championship to Cal. And, you know, I just want to be known for helping people, helping where I come from, helping my communities, and just advocating for, like, social justice and, you know, gun violence. If you make it to the NBA and you have the platform, what's the biggest – Avenue you really want to focus in on? Uh, I really want to focus in on like helping kids with similar situations to me who had to deal with gun violence growing up, just providing them with programs, you know, and also I want to open up like training facilities and just still be around the game. And that's huge because a lot of guys do grow up not having a dad, not having a mom and deal with different gun violence and issues growing up. What's your advice to them? What's your encouragement for them dealing with that? And how do they get through that to become successful like you have? Uh, I feel like I didn't really do this that good, but, you know, after the years, you know, you got to really talk to your, like, to like your family and people you still have in your life and just talk about your problems because it could really help. Absolutely, man. Well, congratulations once again. Enjoy the upcoming season, man. Can we see what God got next for you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Of course, you're welcome on, man. God bless.